All right, so I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and check it out. So you know before, whenever we wanted to create a new object, we use create view. Whenever we wanted to show a list of objects, we use list view. Details was to get the details of one object. Well, since we're kind of customizing a bunch of stuff, we're just gonna import or inherit from generic view. So I'm gonna make this class called user form view. And again, we're gonna inherit from view. And let me get myself a couple lines there. All right. So the first thing you need to specify in here is what is your form class? In other words, what is the blueprint that you're gonna use for your form? And of course, that's just the one that we created over here, user form. Now the next thing you need to specify is something called a template name. Now we don't have this created yet, but it's basically um, the HTML file that the form is gonna be included in, just like we use any template. So the template name, and we're just gonna make a file called uh, registration form. Registration form.html. And this is just gonna be really simple. Actually, probably just copy everything from here and just plot my new form in. So whatevs. So now what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys one of the coolest things about class-based views. You know how basically whenever the user goes to the form the first time, like, add an album form, then they're just making a get request. So that's it, they're just getting a blank form. Now whenever they hit submit, what it's gonna do is it's gonna submit, here let me actually go ahead and show you guys. All right, so here you can see that whenever they submit this form, then where does that information go? Well, it actually goes to the same URL right here. So how does it get handled differently? Because Whenever you submit a form, it's not a get request, it's actually a post request. So in other words, we're using the same URL to handle two different types of requests. A get request, which pretty much means just get this form for the first time, or a post request, which means the user filled out information and they wanna submit the form. So from here, what you can do is something like this. You can say if method equals post and if method equals get, and that logic is gonna work fine because you know, Whenever it's a get method, then that means that they just want the registration page, the blank form, and whenever it's a post method, then that means that they actually submitted the form. So you can split your logic up like that, but then you got a bunch of code, and I mean, we're gonna be writing a bunch of stuff in here, so it's gonna get cluttered. However, there's a better way to do it, and that is this. Whenever you're using class-based views, you can actually take your get and post logic and separate it into built-in functions. So the built-in function for get requests is just get, so self request. So again, whenever the user wants this form and it's a get request, it's gonna call this function right here. Now, of course, you guys know what's coming next. Whenever they submit a form and it's a post request, then you can use this function right here. And then all of your logic is separated from one another and look how beautiful this is. I just wanna make out with my computer right now. All right, so let's go ahead and take care of the get request first. And let me add a comment. So this is basically just gonna display a blank form, a new user coming to your site and they didn't sign up yet. They don't have any account. So what we wanna do is this. We wanna make a form variable and set it equal to self form class, in other words, we just wanna use this form, the user form, and what context do we need to pass in there? None. So by default, it doesn't have any data, that's what the user is trying to do, fill in some data in it. So now we just need to render it, like we have been doing everything else. Where are you at, render, there you go. So we need to pass in the request, self template, and this, Basically means, all right, for the form, where do you want me to plop it in? What HTML file? That one right there. And the last one is just the form itself. So form, form. So in other words, all this is doing is displaying a blank form to the user, nothing new. I mean, we did it before in like the first tutorial. So now we get to the fun part. What happens when the user actually types in their information and hits submit? Well now, 
we need to go ahead and register them, add them to the database. So I'll say process form data right here. So instead of pass, of course, the first thing we need is a reference to the actual form. However, instead of a none, we actually want to pass in whatever information they typed into that form. So that is actually the request post. So whenever they hit submit, all of that gets stored in this post data right here that we can pass to the form and the form can validate that data. So this is already built in Django functionality is going to validate it and make sure it's correct. In other words, this is always going to be true as long as they didn't, you know, use some weird symbols from China or, you know, like they forgot to fill in their username or something like that. As long as it's valid data, maybe they typed in a character for an integer, whatever. So we're going to write if form is valid, then what do we want to do? Well, eventually what we're going to do is we're going to take their information and we're going to store it inside a database. However, before we just take their data and plop it right into our database, we usually want to make some checks and balances and do some, you know, further validation ourselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a user object and this is just going to be a user object using whatever they typed into the form. So form dot save. And what you also want to put here is commit false. All right. So it's important to know what's going on right here. What this does is it just creates an object from the form. What it doesn't do is it doesn't save it to the database yet. So at this point, we didn't enter their information into the database. We're just pretty much just storing it locally so we can do whatever we want with it. So what do we want to do with it? The first thing we want to do is we actually want to get the cleaned or normalized data. So actually, let me add a comment. So cleaned normalized data. All right. So what clean data is, is basically data that is formatted properly. In other words, Let's say that you wanted the user to input a date. You know how everyone in the world uses a different date format, Europeans, Americans, whatever. Well, what this is going to do is it's going to normalize it. In other words, it unifies it. So everyone's using the same format and it just makes sure that it's ready to enter your database properly. So for the username, in order to get the clean version of the data, it just formed clean data. And then you just write whatever field. So username and password. So this is actually the data that you want to plop in your database. So that is the username and that is the password. Now there's one other thing that I need to explain and that is how you set the user's password. So whenever you're setting their username, you can just write username equals, oh, I actually want to change that to Tom. Actually, that's going to be Bucky, whatever. So you may think whenever you're changing their password, it's just going to be bacon123 and just do something like that. However, the one exception is whenever you're changing a user's password, you can't do it in this way. And the reason for that is because passwords aren't just normal text. If you look, they're this weird hash value. So if you just try to change it to plain text, you're going to get a whole bunch of errors. So whenever you do need to change a user's password, this is how you do it. You take the user object and you call a function called set password. And this is where you pass in their password. So again, whenever you need to change a user's password, this is how you need to do it. So after this, everything is set properly. You can now save the user. So this line of code actually saves them to the database. So at this point, after this line runs, they're going to appear right in there. So that's what registration is. Boom roasted. The user is now registered for the website and they are in the database.